What's going on everybody? This is my OnePlus AT4 review, specifically the aquamarine green version. And after two weeks, I can tell you if this phone is truly worthy of that $749 price tag. You might already know that this phone is fast with that 120Hz display, but you can't overlook some of the other great things that this phone can offer, like the insane battery life and one of the most vibrant displays on the market. Did I mention this has 5G? I've been using this phone for about two weeks now, and the premium build of this phone is just something that still sticks out. For the middle build to pretty much the bezel free display, honestly, it's just very nice to look at. With the solid metal build and glass back finish, it definitely goes a long way to feel like a quality device as well. The glass back on the back almost shows no fingerprints when using it extensively throughout my testing period, and it has definitely been a pleasant surprise. That oleophobic coating really works. When holding it, it is definitely a little bit slippery when compared to other matte finishes like the Pixel 4a's I was using. For this one, I would recommend getting a case or a skin just to add a little bit more grip to the phone if you're more prone to dropping your devices. The vibrate slash ring slider is always a welcome sight and feels sturdy and premium when toggled. One thing to note with this slider is that I've inadvertently pressed it multiple times when going for the power button. It's something that you get used to after a while though. I also wish the volume buttons were below the power button, but that's just me. I feel like the power buttons are superb due to their metal construction and I have no doubt they're going to last however long you hand on to this phone for. There is a bit of a camera hump, but it's honestly not that noticeable and does not impair my ability to use my phone when lying on a table. The performance on this phone is simply amazing. With Qualcomm's latest 865 Snapdragon processor, it has plenty of horsepower to power this phone. From daily tasks to heavy gaming, this phone seems like it doesn't even break a sweat and even when playing intensive games and max settings like Genshin Impact. It plays super smooth at max settings at 60 FPS with zero hiccups or stutters. Talking about performance, I have noticed that when playing really intensive graphical games like Genshin Impact in very graphically demanding situations, it gets very hot on the top side of the phone. It gets hot on the right of the camera and on top of the border, which is where you were actually holding the phone. It got so hot in my playing sessions of Genshin Impact in the fact that I had to accommodate my hand placement due to how hot it was feeling. However, even though it got plenty hot during very intensive workloads, it actually handles heat well. For example, when transitioning to a dialogue cutscene where it was less demanding, it cooled very quickly in a matter of seconds. It's just something to note if you are a heavy mobile gamer. Also, this device comes with a default of 256GB of storage and 12GB of RAM. This is just amazing when you compare it to the iPhone 12, which is $50 more expensive and comes with a paltry 64GB of storage. You won't be lacking space with the OnePlus AT, I can tell you that much, and for this price point, it is unbeatable. Let's talk about this display. Let's just get this out the way. This is one of the best screens on the market, period. With a 120Hz and a fluid AMOLED display at 6.5 inches, this is easily the best part of this phone. The screen is vibrant, color accurate, and the color degradation in various viewing angles with this phone is pretty much non-existent. With the flat screen, there are no accidental touches, so huge thumbs up for that. Talking about thumbs up, that 120Hz display really makes it so smooth when scrolling and web browsing. It really makes a massive difference when interacting with the phone. I was using the Pixel 4a before this and you really feel the difference and it just makes using other 60Hz phones seem slow in comparison. At 1100 nits, this screen easily gets sufficiently bright for use outdoors. In direct sunlight, the screen doesn't break a sweat and you won't have any problems using it outside. Let's talk about the software a little bit. With Oxygen OS 11 debuting with the latest version of Android, it was a bit controversial to say the least. OnePlus adopted a revamped setting screen kind of reminiscent of the One UI from Samsung due to its design for one-handed use. The notification shade had a few changes as well like the permanent screen brightness slider, which I don't mind, 
Um, what I don't like is their decision to forego the deep blacks in dark mode for a more dark gray that doesn't do any favors for further improving battery life because of its OLED screen. They also introduced a new always on display which is definitely pretty useful especially when the phone is lying on a desk and displays the time and any new notification without having to touch the phone which is a great addition. However, even though they brought controversial changes, the phone still feels so fast all the time, which is what OnePlus is known for. From interacting on the home screen to the app drawer to interacting with multiple tabs and scrolling through endless feeds, this thing doesn't even hint of slowing down anytime soon. That 120Hz really helps as well in this regard from the smooth animations to the overall rapid response time of your touches. This is still easily my favorite skin on top of Android. Let's look at the camera performance, shall we? In adequate lighting, photos with the rear camera come out really good. The dynamic range is excellent when comparing photos with the Pixel 4a for example. One thing to note with this camera is the fact that pictures tend to go for the brighter and more saturated side which comes down to personal preference but the pictures tend to look really good and overall I think with adequate lighting you'll probably be plenty satisfied with the main rear sensor. The ultra wide sensor loses some dynamic range quality and the colors are a bit more muted when comparing the two. Overall though it takes some nice pictures for social media and you won't be disappointed with the ultra wide sensor when using it in good lighting as well. The selfie camera is not that great and can take a good picture here and there but it's definitely not its strong suit. The dynamic range here really stutters and you can tell when you compare it with the Pixel 4a selfie camera. The details of the background are a lot more crisp in the 4a and are a lot better exposed. As you can see with the 8T selfie shots, the clouds are often overexposed. The selfie camera with this phone will get the job done but it's not the best selfie camera in the market by any means. However, this could definitely be improved in a software update which wouldn't surprise me at all since they have done it before. Where these cameras fall short though is in low light. Sure, this device does have nightscape to shoot better in dark lit situations but in the end they have a lot of noise and are not as sharp as the Pixel 4a under the same circumstances. For the zoom, there is no telephoto lens on the OnePlus 8T so this means that zoom is digital and there is definitely a loss in quality. However, if I had to choose between a telephoto lens and an ultra wide camera, I would 100% lean towards the ultra wide lens. The video this device shoots is decently good. It keeps the same theme as the photos, they are well saturated and tend to be up in the highlight department, but overall it shoots some capable video and it definitely gets the job done. For video capability, we are looking at shooting at 4K 60 and 1080p at 240 FPS for some slow mo shots. The selfie camera is capable of recording in 1080p 30 FPS and takes decent video. As you can see in the video comparison the, between the Pixel 4a and the OnePlus 8T, the 8T looks fine. It blows up the highlights in the sky for example, but that's the theme with this camera. The uprightness and saturation, which works fine for its rear camera in well lit environments, but it's not that impressive when using the selfie cam. Battery life in this phone is one of its biggest strong suits. With that 4500 mAh battery, this thing doesn't run out of juice easily. In my two weeks of use, I typically end my day with about 50 to 40% battery still left in the tank, and when I really hit it with intensive use, it goes maybe to 30. I've never ran out of juice with this device yet, and it is definitely capable as a two day performer depending on your usage. I average around five to six hours of screen on time with my use, and it still has plenty more left in the tank. With the great battery life this phone has when you combine it with the fact that it has a 65 watt fast charger included in the box which charges this thing in 39 minutes and negates the importance of not having wireless charging which would make this device perfect. But for the price we're nitpicking here. The sound of the speakers on this phone is very solid. With stereo speakers one bottom facing and one in the earpiece it has no problems when viewing videos music and podcasts. It gets plenty loud and you don't hear any distortion in high volumes. I have no complaints with the sound and it's actually pretty good in this department in my opinion. Listen, for the $749 price tag, the OnePlus 8T has a lot going for it. 
from the 120 hertz display to the beautiful vibrant screen which could be on par with the Samsung displays for the best in the market to the amazing battery life with the massive battery. This is one of the best bang for your buck phones this year. If you have a $750 budget, I would definitely consider this phone at the top of the list, but it definitely has its downsides with no wireless charging and a subpar camera in low light conditions. If you don't need the best camera in the market and you prioritize other features like 120 hertz, a big display and excellent battery life, this is probably the phone for you. Let me know in the comments, what is your favorite feature of this phone? I would love to hear your feedback. Thank you so much for watching. If you like videos like this, please consider subscribing and I will see you on the next one. Peace.